This is the evening prayer from St. Paul's Anglican Church in Parkhurst, Johannesburg. I've taken the opening prayers from a shortened order for evening prayer from the benefice of Woodstock and Bladen in Oxford, and the closing prayers from Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim thy praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout this world. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. I'm not using the readings from the lectionary today, I'm reading Isaiah 58, 6 to 12, which seems to me prophetic and apt for South Africa in July 2021. I'll be using two different translations and combining them with the reflections for this evening. This translation is from the Jerusalem Bible. Is not this the sort of fast that pleases me, to break unjust fetters, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break all yokes? Is it not sharing your food with the hungry and sheltering the homeless poor? If you see someone lacking clothes, to clothe him, and not to turn away from your own kin. Then your light will blaze out like the dawn, and your wound be quickly healed over. Saving justice will go ahead of you, and Yahweh's glory come behind you. Then you will cry for help, and Yahweh will answer. You will call, and Yahweh will say, I am here. If you do away with the yoke, the clenched fist, and malicious words, if you deprive yourself for the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, your light will rise in the darkness and your darkest hour will be like noon. Yahweh will always guide you, will satisfy your needs in the scorched land. He will give strength to your bones and you will be like a watered garden like a flowing spring whose waters never run dry. Your ancient ruins will be rebuilt. You will build on age-old foundations. You will be called breach mender, restorer of streets to be lived in. What I love about this translation is the emphasis on light and healing. Then your light will blaze out like the dawn and your wound be quickly healed over. The last verse is also remarkable. You will be called breach mender. In some translations, it's repairers of the breach. You will be, recall, you will be called restorer of streets to be lived in, which is exactly what we are doing now in Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal. The next translation comes from the message. This is the kind of fast day I am after, to break the chains of injustice, get rid of exploitation in the workplace, free the oppressed, cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. 
do this and the lights will turn on and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then, when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help and God will say, here I am. If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping, about other people's sins. If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places. Firm muscles, strong bones, You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. You'll use the old rubble of past lives to build anew, rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You'll be known as those who can fix anything, restore old ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. The message doesn't deal with fetters and yokes, but with things that are relevant and recognisable in our own lives. Get rid of exploitation in the workplace. Cancel debts. Be available to your own families. These are the commands in this interpretation. The last verse doesn't talk about repairing breaches or paving streets. It talks about making the community livable again. Not just the streets that must be lived in, but the community itself that must live there. And this, if we can get this right, will cause us to be known as those who can fix anything. A challenge to us here and now. Now I'm going to read the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. And here are the closing prayers from Grace Cathedral. In the beginning, you beamed light that shines in the darkest hour, light that no darkness could overcome. Pierce the soul of this nation with your light and enlighten everyone with your divine wisdom. Pierce the soul of this nation with your light and blind the demons of violence and hate. Pierce the soul of this nation with your light that our chests draw in hope and our hands grasp with strength and our innards gird with all their might and our hearts pump the lifeblood of an unlikely, luminous new beginning being born. Amen. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope.
when we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide, that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, O Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen.